welcome back. Still to come, Davina McCall is going to be here a little bit later on. But first, of course, as you would imagine, the reaction to the Chilcot report into the Iraq war dominates the front pages this morning. The Daily Mail brands Tony Blair a monster of delusion. I'll be with you whatever, reads the Daily Mail, in reference, of course, to a memo sent by the, the then Prime Minister to George Bush. And finally, The Sun leads with weapon of mass deception. Richard Gaysford is at Westminster for us, and, and, and now comes the, the fallout, Richard, doesn't it? Yes, and it continues uh, this morning, Lorraine. Tony Blair just given an interview to BBC Radio in which he said it would have been far better to have challenged the intelligence on Iraq more clearly. Well, that, of course, was the key recommendation from the Chilcot report. The Iraq inquiry saying that the intelligence that led us to war was completely flawed, that it wasn't challenged, it should have been challenged. Tony Blair held responsible for that, uh, and that then the planning wasn't put into the whole operation and that led to something of a complete disaster. Now Tony Blair, if he thought by standing up for two hours yesterday and explaining himself would have drawn the line underneath it, well that doesn't seem to be the case. There are growing calls this morning for him to be taken through some sort of prosecution. The families of those who lost uh, loved ones in the war uh, now looking in minute detail at the 2.6 million words in that report and, and they will see if there's any evidence there that would allow them to mount some sort of prosecution taking Mr Blair to court and others who were also involved. Richard, thank you very much. The families of some of the 179 servicemen and women who died in the Iraq war reacted very strongly, of course, to the report's findings. One of them was Sarah O'Connor, whose brother, Sergeant Bob O'Connor, was killed in action when his plane was shot down in 2005. Sarah, thank you for joining us this morning. A long, long, long time coming. Was it what you hoped for? Um, it surpassed my, my expectations. I felt blindsided by um, the fact that we actually had something that I dared hope I, I, I couldn't believe that we would ever actually get the answers and uh, the answers that you know we knew were there right from day one. Now, 179 British troops, as we said, countless Iraqi civilians. Mm. Um, you, you were the one who stood up yesterday, and it was very emotional, very, very emotional. And you said that Tony Blair was the world's worst terrorist. Do, do you stand by that? And maybe tell me why you think he is. Um, when what the world has to remember is that us families were only given, you know, 180 minutes, one minute for each life that was lost to try and find something to get an answer. Within seconds, there was a collective uh, draw of intake of breath and the oh my gods as we started to read through the statement. Of course, yeah, it was difficult to maintain that clarity when emotion came forward. Yes. And when Sir Chilcott had then read out the public statement, hearing those words, I suddenly realised the link about the failings of the Ministry of Defence. Um, Blair and those ministers that didn't stand up to him um, that ultimately caused the death of my brother and it was like I'd just been told my brother had been killed again. I was incensed and I was angry. That man, had, he pushed over the first domino when he thought he should mm -hmm. and that now reverberates around the world and has put the entire world at risk. Well, that's the thing. There didn't seem to be a plan. No. There didn't seem to be a plan and also what's come out of the report is the fact that our soldiers were sent in there without a plan in the mm -hmm. aftermath of, of, of going in there and toppling Saddam Hussein, but also woefully ill-equipped. Massively. I mean, yesterday, poor old Tony Blair had to stand up for two hours and, and perform his, his very polished political patter. Um, ultimately, when he said the military wanted to do this, like he was trying to apportion blame to them, what he has to remember is that he failed um, as a prime minister to provide adequate funding to the Ministry of Defence. The Ministry of Defence themselves couldn't organise themselves to provide the equipment and stand up and say, we are, we're so thinly stretched, mm. we are unable to sustain this campaign for any length of time and certainly successfully. Let us remember this is not a school trip where, you know, the commanding officer writes and says, dear Mrs O'Connor, if you want Bob to go on this trip to Iraq, you need to supply his boots. But we were getting phone calls um, and to, to supply boots. And then the Americans called us the borrowers. Oh, and let us be aware that for, for, from then and before and, and still to this very day, you know, we are still fighting for basic and adequate, not, not superior, mm. basic and adequate equipment. And do you think if that had happened that your, your brother might still be alive, if it, if it had, if the, if the equipment had been up to scratch? The Ministry of Defence woefully failed the crew and, and all our serving personnel because ultimately what happened is, is, is that while they waste money by commissioning um, um, se two separate pieces of evidence which concluded and recommended that there should be explosive suppressant foam, they chose to completely 
um, ignore the, and the recommendations, the aircraft, and that should, should have been in the aircraft. Yeah, now, ultimately, Bob may well still have, have perished, but they could have been given the most basic of fighting chances. Mm. And that, it's, again, I stress that word, basic. We're still seeing the repercussions, aren't we, of this? I mean, at the weekend, more than 250 oh, no. people in Baghdad were killed by a suicide bomber. Mm. So do you feel that your brother just died for nothing? <sighs> That's such a difficult question. I've had, you know, I, I talked about Iraq's first election day being the day that Bob and the crew were killed and the endearing image that I keep close in my heart of this aged Iraqi woman holding up her fingerprint and the purple ink and the smile on her face. I mean, a woman voting in Iraq yes. is mentis. But ultimately, yes, he did die in fact. He didn't need to, to die, is right. what I would say. Yes. He didn't need to die. And, um, and so were so many. And our British citizens also supported... Um, our, our armed force and you know as you say the repercussions are being felt the veterans of today are being felt we're having um, great um, sporting event companies like fight for life who are, are supporting charities called mm. like talking to minds who help those pick up the pieces about PTSD military relatives um, veterans because it's multi-generational it reverberates out into the families and it is felt time and time again but also, you know, the, the real respect that um, our veterans have by setting up like Pilgrim Bandits that help Ben Parkinson. And, um, and then, you know, we, we, we have to look at the fact that on the first Saturday of every October, the bikers come from the Menin Gate and all the way up to the National Memorial Arboretum to pay homage to the wall mm -hmm. and the names on that wall. And it was started by Martin Dickinson, who turned up as a veteran himself with some of his biker friends and now right to the wall, um, raises money for the National Memorial Arboretum to make sure that sure. those names are never forgotten. No, exactly. That's the thing. Never forget. Never yeah. forget. What do you, what would you like to say to Tony Blair if you could meet him? I mean, I know you said you mm. want a face-to-face yeah. -face meeting Absolutely. with him. What would you say to him on behalf of everyone who has lost someone that they loved? Why has it taken this long for you when you say you're so sure of your decision and that you would not change your decision why is it that we have had to utilise the help of the media and use our, our voices yeah. to lure you to this point and you look us in the eye? Don't give me the Tony Blair show. Give me the father in you. Give me the family man. Now look me in the eye. And just remember that when you go home and you can pick up the phone, there are so many people that can't. Sarah, thank you very much. Thank you.